Hi everyone and welcome to Math Sucks. This video is going to help you pass the Geometry Common Core Regents. We're doing this one question at a time. Here's question 25. In the year 2020, the village of Depew, New York had an area of 5.1 square miles and a population of 15,069 people. In the same year, the village of Lancaster, New York had an area of 2.7 square miles and a population of 10,087 people. Which village had the larger population density in 2020? Justify your answer. So here we're going to be comparing the densities of Depew, New York with 5.1 and 15,069 population, and this is in Depew. And we're going to be comparing that with Lancaster, which has an area of 2.7 miles squared and a population of 10,087. So they want to know which has the larger population density. So when you think of the population density, we're just thinking of like the number of people per the area. So the number of people. So to get the density, we're just going to divide the population, 15,069, divided by the area and see what we get. So with the density of Depew is going to be 2954.7. And now let's find the density of Lancaster. This is going to be 10,000. 87 divided by 2.7 and this is equal to 3735.9. So now we just need to compare these two. So which um, has the larger population density and that would be Lancaster. meaning that there are more people living in a smaller area. Question 26. In triangle ABC below, AC is extended through CD. Angle A is equal to 3x minus 22 degrees. Angle B is 4x minus 18 degrees. And angle BCD, BCD over here is 6x minus 23 degrees. Determine and state the angle of ACB. So we're looking over here. So what we can do here is notice, so we're working with this triangle, which we know inside uh, the degrees all added up to 180 degrees. So with a triangle, interior angles all add to 180 degrees. So another thing with this extended line here, we also know that these two angles, because this is a straight line, this right here is a straight line where angles also add to 180 degrees. So knowing that, we can find the value of this. If you think about how to find this missing angle here, we know that 180 minus this is going to give us angle C, and we know that 180 minus 3x minus 22 plus 4x minus 18 is also going to give us this angle C. So what we could do is actually set these two equations equal to each other. So we can say 3x minus 22 plus 4x minus 18. So we're adding these two angles and we're saying that's equal to 6x minus 23. And we know that because once we add angle C to this left part of the equation, we'd get 180 degrees. And we know that if we add angle C on the right side of the equation. We'll also get 180 degrees. And now we just need to solve this algebraically. So just adding the X values together, the same with the same vari variables. We know X is equal to 17 degrees. But before we just circle our answer, remember we're trying to find this missing angle C. So we just did the first part of this question where we're finding the value of X, but now let's plug in the value of X to uh, find this missing angle. So we're, 
we know this is going to be 180 degrees if we're just looking at this line here. 180 degrees minus 6, and then now we know the value of x is 17, so 6 times 17 minus 23, and then we could just calculate this. So this is 180 minus 79, and we get 101 degrees. So this angle C right here is 101 degrees. And that's our answer. Question 27. Parallelogram ABCD is shown below. Using a compass and straight edge, construct the altitude from point A, so we're looking over here, to side DC. Leave all construction marks. So, um, so the first thing we're going to want to do here is to extend this line here from D. So I'm just going to use a ruler and extend it out. Next, we're going to draw an arc from point A that intersects DC at two points and then mark both points. So we're going to take our compass, bring the point to point A, and then we're going to just take an arc that intersects the line we just made along DC, and then you could see why we extended that line. So this is, and then we're just going to mark off our points here. Now we're going to take the compass. So I'm just gonna take this point of the compass to the point we just made, keeping that same distance of the compass that we just used. And I'm just gonna swing the arc, swing an arc below, below our parallelogram. And then I'm gonna keep that same distance and then bring it to the other point we made and then do the same thing. So you'll see we made a little cross section here and we're going to line that up with, with our original point A and just kind of draw a line and then this is our altitude. And that's our answer. Yeah, so these constructions, they it can get confusing, but just keep practicing them. I have a whole playlist and you can check that out. Um, I'll put a link in the description below. Question 28. Quadrilateral QUAD is graphed on the set of axes below. Determine and state the area of quadrilateral QUAD. So for these kinds of questions, I'm going to start out by drawing a rectangle around our quadrilateral. So notice we kind of made these triangles go out surrounding the quadrilateral. So what we're going to do is find the area of each of these triangles. I'll label them one, two, three, four. We'll find the area of each of these and the area of the rectangle, then subtract out all the area of the triangle. If that doesn't make sense, uh, we'll go through this one step at a time. So first let's find the area of that big rectangle that we just made. So this has one, two, three, four, five, six. This has six going all around this way. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and ten units going this way. So this is um, to get the area of a rectangle, we're just gonna do six times ten, which gives us sixty. And now we're gonna find the area of each triangle. So the area of triangle one is equal to one half base times height. So if you look at the base, you can see this has a value of one, two, three times one, two, three, four, five. So this is 15 divided by two, which will give us 7.5. Now let's try to find the area of triangle two. This is one half base times height. We have one, two, three again, times one, two, three, four, five. And again, we get 7.5. And let's keep going. Let's find triangle three, this area. These triangles will happen to be the same, but there's a lot of, this kind of question comes up a lot and uh, that doesn't always happen. So just be careful and always make sure each uh, triangle area is the same or different. Okay, so, so we found the area of each triangle and the area of the rectangle. So now we're just going to take our whole 60 and then subtract out seven plus, 0.5 four times, representing each triangle. So 
and we get 30, which is our answer. Question 29. In a right triangle, the acute angles have the relationship sine of 3x minus 7 degrees is equal to cosine of x plus 1 degrees. Determine and state the value of x. So the, the nice thing about the information they gave us is that sine of x and cosine of x are co-functions that are complementary in add to 90 degrees. So what that means is we could just take the values within here, within the function, 3x minus 7, add them together, plus x plus 1, and set the equal to 90 degrees, and then solve for x. So we'll get 4x. And we get x is equal to 24. Question number 30. In a circle A below, angle BAM is 36 degrees. If AB is 20, so AB right here, radius is 20, determine and state the length of MB. So they want us to find this arc here, arc MB. So really what we're finding is the circumference of a sector. So really like a, the circumference, the measure of this arc is the circumference of just a little piece of the pi of this whole circle. So when you think about the circum circumference formula, it's um, the circumference formula is, is pi times the diameter. Cherry pie is delicious. That's how I remember it. Pi times the diameter. So we know the diameter here is 40 because the radius is 20. 40 times pi, but we're not finding the whole circumference. We're just gonna, we're just trying to find this part. So to do that, we have 40 times pi, and then what we're gonna do is take the angle measure that they gave us of this small piece of pi, 36, and then divide it by the whole, kind of making a fraction, the whole um, part of the circle, the 36 degrees that we're trying to find out of the whole circle, 360 degrees. So we just make a little fraction of what they're looking for the small slice over the whole. So now we just need to calculate this all together. So we have 40 times pi. Oh, it says leave it in terms of pi. So actually we could just do 40 times 36 pi by 360 and we get four pi. And that's our answer. Question 31. In triangles A and T and ELM below, AN equals six, NT is 5.6, TA is 4, EL is 9, and LM is 8.4, and ME is 6. Explain why triangle ANT is similar to triangle ELM. So what I'm going to do here is make sure that the sides are in proportion from one triangle to another. So we're going to compare each corresponding side and just divide them and make sure that each one lines up equally. Let's see what the difference is between 5.6 to 8.4. What are we multiplying times 5.6 to 8.4? So to do that, I'm just going to do 8.4 divided by 5.6. And when we do that, let's see what we get. So we get 1.5. So the scale factor um, from this side to this side is 1.5. Now let's try um, another pair of corresponding sides. So let's try four and six. So let's see what you multiply times four to get to six. We're gonna do six divided by four. And you can see we also get 1.5. So again, four times 1.5 will give us six. 5.6 times 1.5 will give us 8.4. And now the last pair of corresponding sides. Let's divide nine divided by six. which is 1.5 again. So because all of these ratios are equal, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, we're multiplying uh, each length times 1.5. We know that the sides are in proportion to each other and that this is these triangles are similar to each other. So we're just gonna need to sum that up.
The corresponding sides are in proportion, therefore triangle ANT is similar to triangle ELM by side, side, side. And that's our answer. And this is the last question of part two. Look out for part three coming out soon. Good luck and happy calculating.